page 69, 1 and 4. You know, we're going to keep pressing forward with the gospel no matter what. And the gospel is the most important thing in the world because uh, there's still people out there that are untold. Millions. So we're going to keep pressing forward with the gospel no matter what. So invite somebody out to church. Bring somebody with you. Good morning. Welcome to church. Um, do we have anybody, uh, any prayer requests out there? Certainly. <clears throat> well, we'll open with a word of prayer. Chris, her surgery is tomorrow. tomorrow? And Herman for his shingles. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all and foremost, we want to thank you for Christ. Thank you for sending your Son to the cross of Calvary to shed his perfect blood for our sins, and that only through his death, his burial, and his resurrection, we know we have eternal life. And we can't lose that. Please be with our children and your grandchildren as they venture out this next week. Keep a hedge of protection around them as they go about uh, their Halloween. Please be with the firearms deer hunters and their safety this coming Saturday. And uh, present maybe some opportunities to share the gospel in the deer camps and the, in the meetings there. Please be with Christy Giffen as she goes into surgery tomorrow. Guide the, the instruments and we pray that all goes well for her and that she recovers quickly. Please we be with Jim and, and Gwen as Jim battles Alzheimer's and be with Gwen, give her strength to, to help Jim and, and give her some peace. peace. Please be with Jan Pattison and Jenny Lundin as, as they battle every day and give them strength and healing. Please be with John and Linda Lake as John is recovering from his surgery and be with Linda as she is a caregiver for John. Please be with all of our ministries here in the United States and globally and with all of the people gathered here today. Please build a hedge of protection around them, our brothers and sisters in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
somebody to turn to page 259. <laughs> verse 1 and 4. any birthdays? No birthday. How about anniversaries? Oh, oh, Kevin. How long have you been married, Kevin? One year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I know Kevin has got something to say because uh, he's always got something to say. Thank you, Kevin. Let's sing happy anniversary. Happy, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Celebrating merrily our happy anniversary. Celebrating merrily our happy anniversary. And God bless you. Well, if uh, any of you are, are inspired, you can come over to the Majestic Pines of the Manor House because Brian's not going to be here for four weeks. So by the time I get done singing here and at Majestic Pines and at the Manor House, I'm pretty well shot my voice is. So if anybody wants to come and lead singing or speak or whatever, you're welcome to come. So come and uh, give us a hand. So turn to page uh, 67. We'll do all three. <coughs> 67.
Did we have <clears throat> do we have any announcements? Not that I can think of at the moment. Anything from the At the roller rink, the 19th. Uh, Sunday, 1 to 3. 1 to 3. Pizza and pop provided. I, yep. Pizza and pop at the Playmore Roller Rink, November 19th. It's a Sunday from 1 to 3. This will be the last song. Bible study Wednesday, Wednesdays, 7. Uh, and then uh, I understand Herman. Herman with his shingles is probably looking for some help at the jail Monday nights. Seven. Seven. So anybody that wants to come out and uh, give Herman a hand, he definitely will, will need some help. And it's always better to go to a couple people because uh, when you go there alone, you know, you're kind of one against a whole bunch. So it, it's kind of nice to have uh, somebody there with you to kind of help you out with the scriptures and, and then you'll feel more comfortable. And uh, next Sunday is the time change, so we'll fall back one hour. <coughs> like you'll be late for church. <laughs> Everybody be here early. Yeah, and that's I don't good. Know what's going on. <laughs> so you get two hours of service. Yeah. Then. Ronnie's preaching next week, so everybody come for that two-hour service because he's, he's really long-winded. <laughs> uh, let's... <laughs> Turn to that page wasn't a two. Very good look you just <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> page two. Uh, one and four. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm as nervous as a fox in a hen house. <clears throat> so if I run off the stage, you'll know why. <clears throat> all of the, 
anyone that has ever met me knows that I like to talk a lot. <laughs> if there's anyone anywhere that can vouch for me on that point, it's my wife. Many times she kindly reminds me, sometimes not so kindly, that it's quiet time. Dennis Hines once said he'd only met a few people that talked a lot, but I run them a close second. <clears throat> My father, Ron, told me long ago I should, ever, uh, I should either become a preacher or a politician. I couldn't make it as one of them because I couldn't lie with a straight face and I didn't know enough scripture to do the other. Well, I own a Bible now and I still don't know a lot of scripture. But the Good News Church has taught me what I know and how I'm saved and how Jesus Christ died on the cross for all the sins of all mankind one time making a perfect sacrifice and that through his death, his burial, and his resurrection we can all know we have eternal life and all we have to do is accept what he did for us. My sermon might be short today but I'd like to speak on friendship. What friends truly are and some examples in the Bible about friends and what they've done for one another and what they continue to do for one another. The definition of friendship <clears throat> or a friend is a person that has a strong liking for and trust in another. Over in the book of Proverbs, 17, 17. <clears throat> Proverbs seventeen, seventeen. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity we should wait we should wait on the right friendships pick friends that we look up to pray about the friendships Maybe ask God how we can be a better friend. Be honest with our friends. Friendship is not popularity. Stick up for your friends. Be a friend to someone you feel needs one. For the young people, Obey your parents' discernment about your friends. Single people, like Kevin was talking about, marry a friend. And above all else, share the gospel of Jesus Christ with a friend. Proverbs 27, 9 through 9 and 10. <clears throat> Proverbs 27, 9. Ointment and perfume delight the heart, and the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel. Do not forsake your own friend or your father's friend. 
nor go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. I feel this does not address spiritual brothers, but physical brothers. The blood relationship is circumstantial, in which we have no control. But it is inferior to the connection we have as a choice in some cases. Our brothers and sisters, our friends in Christ. Proverbs 18, 4. Proverbs 18:24 A man who has friends must himself be friendly but there is one friend who sticks closer than any brother and that's Jesus Christ A man of many friends will suffer loss or he will He will go broke because of his hospitality. And in trouble, they will desert him. Never become the hero of the mob. Because in everyone's belt is the knife of the assassin. Proverbs 19.6 Many entreat the favor of the nobility and every man is a friend to someone who gives gifts everyone is a friend to those that are on the top up on the mountain everyone wants to shake your hand when you're up on the top of that mountain but how many will be there when you've hit the bottom. Your friends and your brothers and sisters in Christ will be there. Jesus Christ will be there. And your brothers and sisters will be there. I'd like to talk about some friendships in the Bible and some things we could learn from these friendships. David and Jonathan's friendship. <clears throat> David and Jonathan, 1 Samuel 18 20. Excuse me, 18 and 20. First Samuel. 18. Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. They were knit. Well, if you've ever seen somebody knit, it's pretty hard to pull that apart. They're interwoven together. Their souls were together. This is the essence of friendship. Love one another as you love yourself. Jonathan was unwaveringly loyal to David. These two shared a close emotional bond and were unafraid of sharing their feelings. David and Jonathan are an example of the male friendship that we often lack in our modern culture. Men don't often form close bonds with one another. God's love is the bond that holds us together. Sometimes God blesses us with friends that complement us perfectly. And other times we are called on to be that friend for someone else. 
Moses and Aaron <clears throat> were actual brothers, both spiritually and physically brothers. Moses and Aaron. Moses was a speaker. He could speak. But Aaron was a, Aaron was a better speaker. And Aaron was appointed by God to speak for Moses to Pharaoh. Aaron gladly did this, speaking to Pharaoh for Moses and supporting him in all and on behalf of all the ways that he needed. Sometimes we are called to help someone whom is less in a certain area and sometimes someone is called for us to fill in the gap. Elijah and Elisha in 2 Kings 2.2. 2. Second Kings two two. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elijah Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Elisha was absolutely devoted to his friend, his mentor, because he knew he would make an excellent guide in life. It is important to choose friends who are wise, holy, and passionate about the gospel and about what they do. After all, we tend to be like our peers. Naomi and Ruth. Now, we've all heard about in-laws and how all the stories about in-laws. You know, the in-laws are coming over and so on and so forth. Well, how many people can say their best friend is their mother-in-law? Ruth 1, 16 and 17. <clears throat> Ruth one sixteen. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you, for wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. <clears throat> Their husbands had died. Their friendship shows us the value of loyalty unconditional love, and self-sacrifice. Ruth did not hesitate. This kind of action creates the strongest of friendships, a sense of security, and when we are in trouble, someone will be there for us. Barnabas and Paul Barnabas and Paul, Saul, Saul Paul, went on a mission trip together. And I believe it was, I can't remember, was it John Mark, I believe they went with, I can't remember, at the time. But they took 
they took someone with them on their mission trip. And after they went on their first mission trip, they went to go on another one. And they disagreed on who they should take with them. One thought they should take the same person, and one thought they should take another. So they disagreed. And they had a disagreement. But they didn't continue to disagree. One took someone, and one took someone else. The thing they did not disagree on was the gospel of Jesus Christ. They continued to share the same gospel, the only true gospel, on their mission trips. <clears throat> See, I lost my place. God and Abraham. Abraham was God's friend. Second Corinthians twenty. Seven. Why do I have twenty seven written down here? Twenty. Excuse me, James. We'll go over to the book of James two twenty three. James 2.23, and the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. We are all friends of God. Those that have believed in his death, burial, and resurrection. In the book of Isaiah 41.8, Isaiah 41, 8. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. The descendants of Abraham are my friend. Now, God could have said, we are his servants. But he chose to call us his friends. Romans, excuse me, Jesus Christ and mankind... Jesus Christ and mankind. Over in the book of John 15, 13. These are some wonderful words. John 15, 13. Greater love has no one no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Now, Jesus Christ did that for us, for all of mankind. He voluntarily, voluntarily laid down his life for his friends. That's a wonderful thing. He saves us from a hell that we deserve to heaven we don't. I think we can learn a lot from David, Jonathan, Moses, Aaron, Elijah, Elisha, Naomi, and Ruth, Barnabas, and Paul. But we can learn the most from Jesus Christ. He came to this earth, humbled himself as a man, lived a sinless life because he can't sin. And he laid down that perfect life 
and with his perfect blood turned the cross into an altar and rose again, was buried and rose again the third day, showing us the payment for sin had been paid in full. And all we have to do is believe that, and we have eternal life. And what are we here to do now after we that we are saved? What is the work? The work is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with salvation. It has to do with fellowship. And that what what we we want to do. We we would we don't want to see any of our friends go to hell. Because you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. And so what is the gospel? The gospel can be found over in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. And Ron was nice enough to put it on her handout today. And I'll read it to you. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, some will tell you that they're not sinners. They don't sin. They may be used to sin. They don't sin anymore. But God says, everyone has sinned. We're in Romans 3.23. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned. All. Every last one have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The glory of God, he, he's perfect. And we all have fallen short. Our sins keep us separated from him and condemn us. We're, we're going to hell. Those that are unsaved have not accepted Christ's death payment on the cross. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal life. I believe Dennis says eternal life means forever and ever and ever. And it is continual forever. We can't even fathom forever in our little human minds, but forever and ever and ever is eternal life. Salvation cannot be earned. Some would say, <clears throat> I am not very good at this, but some would say salvation can be earned. If I do at this wallet, let this hand represent you and I, and this wallet represents our sin. God loves us, but he hates our sin because it, it's a barrier. It's a separation between he and, I, and, and, and us. Well, some people would say salvation can be earned. You could do some good works and cover that sin up. Uh, maybe get baptized. You know, get water baptized. There you go. You covered it up. Uh, go to communion. Go confess your sins to a priest. Uh, take communion. You, could, you can do all these things, but the problem is the sin is there. It hasn't done anything. Because works don't save. Salvation cannot be earned. What Christ did is he went to the cross and he took your sins and my sins and the sins of the whole world and he placed them on himself and he shed his blood and he was buried and he rose again the third day and now we are together as one. We are not seen as a sinner any longer through God the Father's eyes. We are seen in Christ. 
Ephesians, over in the book of Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you are sa- you excuse me, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, which means not of works. Salvation cannot be earned. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Christ paid for our sins. Paying for our sins. Christ died. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Voluntarily went to the cross and died for us. Each believer, those that believe in the gospel, that Christ was crucified, was buried, and he rose again the third day, showing the payment for sin had been paid in full. Each believer has eternal life. That minute that they believe, and it cannot be lost, they have eternal life that minute. And the book of John, three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting and eternal are the same thing forever and ever and ever. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, Jesus Christ, And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light lest their deeds be exposed. But he who does, the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be seen clearly, that they have been done in God. Life eternal cannot be lost. It cannot be walked away from. You cannot take yourself out of salvation. You are saved once for all when you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that can be found in John 6.37 and 6.39. All, all, meaning everyone, that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Once you are sealed by the Holy Spirit, after you've believed the gospel of Jesus Christ, no one can remove you, you cannot remove yourself, and God is not going to cast you out. Excuse me. 639. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that all of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And that could have two meanings. We're talking about raising up the last day, uh, raising up on the rapture, and it could be... <coughs> Raising, raising you up when you, you take your last breath. There's two, two meanings there. I'd like to close. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, foremost, 
we, we're, we come here to thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross in payment for our sins, the sins of the whole world, and that only by believing in your death, burial, and resurrection, we know we have eternal life and we can't lose that. The gospel is so clear that all we have to do is believe that and we know we have eternal life at that second and you will not ever cast us out. And please be with uh, the congregation here as they go, go about their, their journeys this next week. Keep them safe. Uh, keep the, the church body here, the body of believers, uh, in, in, your, in your thoughts as we go through this uh, period of readjustment. And be with our children, be with this great nation where we can come out and gather and read about you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Everybody stand and turn to page 314. Yeah. Uh -huh.